The Atheist Debates Project presents A Nicer Pope. So there's been a lot said about Pope Francis, the newest pope, and I've seen positive things from atheists and from theists as well, that we have a nicer, kinder, gentler pope uh, than in the past, and that he's fundamentally a good guy who's doing a lot of things to change the world. And I think there is at least some truth in that. But I want to actually talk about a video that was posted recently and my thoughts about what's actually going on here and to make sure we don't give more credit than is deserved and that we apply the same objections where they're warranted. So recently there was a video shared uh, and it got kind of popular. It was a video of a young boy uh, who was at an audience before the Pope and the, the boy was breaking down crying and couldn't answer his question and he ended up going up to the Pope and the Pope gave him a hug and he whispered his question to the Pope and then the Pope relayed the boy's question and his answer uh, to the crowd. Essentially, the boy's father had recently died and the boy's father was an atheist and so he asked the Pope if his dad was in heaven. The Pope relayed uh, the content of the, of the kid's question, essentially saying that his dad was an atheist, but he had had all of his kids baptized, and that he was a good man. And the Pope basically did what any good human being would do, albeit colored with the context of, hey, he's a Pope, he's Catholic, he believes. And he said, look at the beautiful testimony that this man gave to his kids. He had all four of his kids baptized and they call him a good man. And clearly only a good man could achieve that sort of result. And they, you know, these kids have inherited his strength so that they're willing to, you know, cry in front of us. And what do we think about that? Or essentially the question was, is my dad in heaven? And the Pope started off by pointing out that only God decides who is or isn't in heaven. And a lot of Catholics have seized on this to say, see, he's not claiming to know. He's saying God is the ultimate, you know, decider. But he continued and followed up that statement by essentially saying what the answer is. Only God knows who's going to heaven, but what's God like? Isn't God a father with the heart of a father? Do you think that it's possible for God to look at this man who baptized his four kids and raised them so that they think that he's a good man? Is it possible for God to look at him and say, depart from me? And he's waiting for an answer from the crowd and it doesn't really come. Um, and I think the fact that it doesn't immediately come shows that this is a problem within the varieties of Christianity. But the Pope basically urges them on, come on, say it, say it loud, say it with confidence. No, uh, God wouldn't cast him out. And the curious thing here is that everything in me that is you know, focused on being a decent human being recognizes that this is in fact compassion. I am not just putting out a video just to crap all over the Pope. The Pope did his best to be compassionate. And the former Southern Baptist in me immediately wants to jump up and say, ah, yes, 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 Pope, but there are doctrinal issues here, you see, because goodness is not the standard by which we determine whether or not you get to heaven. You know, Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And uh, there are people who will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, and I will say, depart from me, for I didn't know you. And then there's always been doctrinal disputes about uh, faith versus works. And... To do so would be to get into a no true Christian fallacy. It would be essentially the Southern Baptist or Protestant upbringing saying, ah, of course those Catholics, they're, you know, idol worshiping, Mary worshiping, they got extra crap in there. Of course, they're not real Christians. And I think that it would be fair based on my background to point out those things. But I don't get to do that anymore. I have no reason to think that Baptists are any more right about their interpretation than Catholics are. I think that some things are more clearly biblical than others, and you know this is why it's very difficult to find fault with Westboro Baptist Church's biblical foundations, even if you object all day long to what terrible people they are. And so on the one hand, you've got a pope that seems to be much better uh, uh, by being a little fuzzier with the doctrine. This isn't the first time, though, that the pope has said things that were viewed as rather positive about atheists and by atheists. In 2013, I think it was, the Pope said that God has redeemed all of us 
all of us with the blood of Christ, all of us, not just Catholics, everyone, even, a, even the atheists, everyone. And the, this got quite a bit of reaction, uh, so much so that, um, you know, people were trying to paint the Pope as if he was saying that atheists were saved, which it's easy to understand why people thought that, um, considering what he actually said. Uh, but there were others who are saying this is basically just the Pope stating doctrine that salvation is open to all, even the atheists. God has uh, granted the pathway by which even atheists can be saved. And uh, Father Thomas uh, Rosica basically issued an explanatory note, a, a correction, an addendum to the Pope, um, so that non-Catholics who know the Catholic Church but don't convert cannot be saved and only those who sincerely seek God can attain eternal salvation. At one point, the Pope wrote, you ask if the God of Christians forgives those who do not believe and who do not seek faith. Given the premise, and that this is fundamental, that the mercy of God is limitless for those who turn to him with a sincere and contrite heart, the issue for the unbeliever lies in obeying his or her conscience. Trying to have it both ways is what he's doing. Essentially, when answering this question about whether or not non-believers are gonna to go to heaven, he sets up this thing where God equals goodness and truth, and anyone who sincerely follows their conscience towards goodness and truth is therefore following their conscience towards God, and they will be saved. It really does get to a good people will go to heaven, a rather simplistic thing. He adds a little complexity to it, and the, the corrections uh, that come after that are uh, a little concerning. Uh, because, at least within Catholicism, there's been a traditional uh, view of papal infallibility, that whatever the Pope says is true. Pope, Pope is God's messenger on earth. And when he's corrected by cardinals and bishops, um, that's a bit problematic. He's also said nice things like, um, it's, if you're going to be a hypocritical Christian, it would be better for you to be an atheist. And people take that and view it as, oh, well, obviously it would be better for you to be a good atheist than it would be for you to be a bad Christian. Uh, but without delving off into kind of Mormon uh, notions that are very similar, the key thing here is that what he's not saying is that it is good to be a good atheist. He still views that it is better to be a better Christian, a sincere, devout follower, someone who believes in Jesus, someone who advocates for a Christ-like life that points to Christ, not just, hey, I'm pointing to something that you get to call Christ-like, but I'm not calling it Christ-like, it's a good thing. This is not what the Pope is really doing. Do we have a kinder, kinder gentler Pope? Sure. Do we have someone who's probably a better human being? Sure. Do we have somebody that I'd actually like to sit down and have a conversation with? Sure. Does that mean the Pope's an atheist? No. The people who are running to this, uh, oh, look how friendly the Pope is to an atheist. Maybe he's an atheist. Maybe he's another one of these. I don't know what the Pope believes or whether or not he sincerely believes in a God. Um, but I don't have enough evidence to conclude the, conclude the Pope's an atheist. I'm not even sure that he's that convinced um, that atheists do go to heaven, and this could have just been, let's make this kid feel good and keep it as close to doctrine as we can. But there's something more important about this video that I want to address. Of all the potential issues, we could talk about doctrine, we could talk about whether or not the Pope's a better person, but at the end of the day, why was that boy crying? That boy was crying because the church had fed him the notion of heaven and hell. Because the church and the church doctrine had taught him that Catholics go to heaven and atheists go to hell. Non-Catholics go to hell. He was crying because everything about church doctrine up to that point, in his mind, had said, atheists are going to hell. And what the Pope did is modify his understanding of doctrine in order to alleviate that sadness. But that sadness only existed because of church doctrine. This child was distraught, crying, miserable, upset, terrified that the man he loved, the man who had raised him, was burning in hell. And that notion was put into that kid's head by the church. And while they can 
fiddle around and change their doctrines and change how they represent their doctrines to be kinder and gentler, it doesn't mitigate the fact that they tortured a child's mind with an idea that they cannot demonstrate. If the notion is God determines who goes to heaven and who doesn't, then they should have never made any proclamations about who does or doesn't go to heaven. There should have never been an instance where this, in, this kid or any kid felt distraught and depressed and sad and terrified because the church had taught them that their father might likely go to hell. If the answer is, we don't know, if the answer is, only God knows, then the church has no business pretending that they know in the first place, and they certainly aren't better people for pretending that they know a different answer when it suits them. That is a problem. And while the Pope is, you know, certainly doing something generally kind, he's still pretending to have information that he doesn't have. Even if his model is true, I don't think there's a God, but even if there is a God, if the Pope's model is that only God knows, then that should be the answer. We should be getting, seeing them get up every, every Sunday and saying, we don't really know that much, but God knows. Well, then they have to face the question of, how do you know that God knows? And why don't you know this other stuff? And why isn't God relaying this information to you? Why isn't God being more accurate? If it's the case that a nice man who has, allows his kids to be baptized and raises them dies, God's not going to turn him away. If that's actually likely, then why hasn't that been the de facto view? Uh, it's not. It's not been the de facto view within Protestantism. It doesn't, isn't the de facto view within Catholicism or many other versions of Christianity, except when it's convenient to be softer. So if the Pope has accomplished anything, I'd argue that he's accomplished uh, a rapid end to the notion of papal infallibility. That by saying these things that require explanation and correction, by challenging traditional views of doctrine to potentially soften them, he is eliminating the idea that the Pope is infallible. Every time somebody offers a correction or an explanation, the notion that the Pope is infallible goes away. And what that does is it allows people to pay less attention to what the Pope says and what the Church says, to not view a Church as an authority. And that has to be a good thing. This video is made possible by supporters of the Atheist Debates Patreon project. You can find more information and add your support at patreon.com slash atheistdebates.